Good evening, everyone. Nikasar here with Tiger joining me tonight. How's it going? Good. Um, so it's another week three match now. I think we've already had uh, had one. In fact, I think you 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 uh, broadcast that one, didn't you, Tiger, last night? I believe so. With Hess, I believe. Yeah. Um. So that one. Oh, this is shameful. I can't even remember who it was. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go and check the notes that I have definitely prepared. <laughs> uh. Um. Right, of course. Um, <laughs> um, right, yeah, your one was the Splat Factory in Team 13. That was the recording. It was Venomous Squids and Surf and Turf playing the first Week 3 match last night. But now, of course, we've got um, another Div 3 match. Uh, should be pretty excellent. We've got Prismatic taking on Krillbill. Oh, um, alright. Well, I've been in... F uh, I think we might have some... Uh, some potential issues here. Um, we might need to, we need to wait a bit and see where the teams are as far as readiness goes. Um, still, mm. um, let, let's just uh, let's just see what we've uh, what we've got lined up for us, regardless of that. Um, I'm just gonna have to let them deal with that. Okay. Um, so there might be some issues getting enough players, I think. Um, we'll see what happens there. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, it looks like it might end up being um, being a deferment or whatever, which will make this a bit of an anticlimax. Um, still, um, I suppose we'll, yeah, we'll leave that we'll leave that to the in the captain's hands for now. <laughs> um, yeah, I might as well just just go over the maps. It's at least something that we can uh, use as lessons for ourselves for. Um, Future, future weeks, um, future, future matches rather. Um, Splat Zone's Kelp Dome, I believe, actually got played in season one, possibly as a starter map as well in one week. It's, um, I always find it's an interesting one because you've obviously, you know, like any Splat Zones game, you've got that potential for just, you know, quick knockouts when a team gets completely shut out. Um, what's your usual approach there, Tiger? I usually um go down the right um I usually go down um the right where um I usually just try and flank with my octo brush. Hmm. Make sure yeah, get in get in from other thing. All right. Well, I think we've uh, we do have our last player on the way. That's good. Um. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I've I've um. For better or worse, I I I, I often get impatient on Kelp Dome. I'll confess. Um. Certainly in solo matches, I more often than not just take the easy exit out of spawn um, and and just try and hero it on the point. <laughs> Probably not a uh, a winning option necessarily. Still, um, I've learned this throughout with the dynamo where um at spawn you can like flick um where like the dynamo has like a long flick so you can flick um paint over the wall apparently. Mm. Yeah, oh, I think that'd be pretty neat. Um. You know, you've obviously got that advantage where there's a line of sight isn't necessary, and if you're running, like, both of the dynamos, obviously, neither of them really care about line of sight. If you've got the standard dynamo, you've got a stingray, which is, you know, pretty cool on kelp. People don't have much room to manoeuvre, and the gold's got the armour, obviously, so you don't need to be able to see anything in order to use it right. I'll have to try that out with something else indirect. I imagine that would be fun with an explosion too. Yeah, it works with the heavy, uh, and I believe explosion as well. Mmm. Um, yeah, of course, um, because that zone, you know, there's obviously so much of, so much of the, um, of the zones up top, you can't really, I, I mean, I, I imagine it's possible, theoretically, to cap entirely by painting on the ground. Maybe it's not quite, um, but certainly if you only focus on painting on the ground, you're gonna have a tremendously difficult time getting anything done. Yeah. You know, you get those silly little chase scenarios where you've got two okay, halves of each team. Um, they're fourths here now, so. Excellent. All right. Well, it looks like we're all ready. Glad that we don't have to don't have to bail on everyone. You are getting your match. What the? <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, um, both our teams facing off against each other. So we'll see whether or not any substitutions will be having, happening. Rather, but at the moment, um, it looks like Krillbill's lineup is Lukash, Natty, Chich, and Turbo for the evening. And on Prismatic side, we've got Night Terror, Raichu. Roy and Kexplar. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, certainly some of these I've seen in, um, you know, doing, doing quite a bit, actually, um, in, in Season 1. In fact, um, going, wandering away from the, um, wandering away from, from the actual people playing right now and just moving more generally to the lineups, I've had quite a few solo queue encounters with Spud on Prismat Inc. Um, they've helped carry me to a few wins I didn't really deserve once or twice. So I, I do like, you know, one of the benefits of having this, like, you know, so many players engaged in the league is it just means there are so many more faces that you recognise when you're playing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I do I do enjoy just, you know, whether I'm playing or just seeing over, like, seeing over Alley Cat's shoulder, um, like, the, oh yeah, I know that person, they're on that team, that's pretty neat, you know. And you got that advantage as well, you know, obviously in a solo match, you, you know, you can either go, okay, you know, if, I, if they're on my if they're on my side, then I've got someone I know a bit about. I can try and play to their strengths and weaknesses. And if they're on the other team, and well, you know, if I lose, at least someone I know is getting a win. <laughs> All right. Well, we're nearly taking. Yeah, nearly... That's, that's pretty much me always running. That's me except with the fly. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, solo's a bit. You know, there's always going to be potential for heartbreak, so I think it's important to look for the silver linings there. Okay. Well, people taking great caution with their weapon picks, clearly wanting to make sure that they've got the right, um, right stuff there ready. Okay. Go blob lobber. In fact, Two yeah, three. is that a double blob lobber, or rather one on each team? Pretty neat. All right, Krillbill here running a pretty interesting lineup, actually. Um, you know, a real mix of short and long range. Um, yeah, you know, one each. Well, there's already two times for Christmas. Wow, yeah, it's a strong, strong opening. That ball point splatling could be, you know, could be key to getting them, like getting them back in. I feel you've got that maneuverability, that flexibility. Um, and indeed, it looks like they're they're teaming up there with the blob lover. Trades on the point, but Krillbill is still ticking down. There's a lot of ink storms coming out by by lots of things. Yeah, that double storm's pretty nasty. Um, I think Krillbill are probably quite happy that it wasn't like they weren't aimed at the point necessarily, sort of tangential to it. Oh boy, and then the Blob Lover wins out in that duel over the Splat Brella, um, showing just how dangerous those bubbles are if you stand in down one place. down for Prisoner to knock out. Yes, at this point I think it's going to be very difficult for them to stop the point in time. Um, especially with Natty climbing up there to clean up the very, very top bits of ink. Um, it will be... yeah, there we go. Very strong start for Krillbill. Yeah, with the short and sharp quick knockout. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's really many many lessons we can take from that, apart from the fact that obviously in, you know, splat zones and kelp splat zones in particular, if you am, you know, able to lock a team down for a bit, you're gonna get a lot out of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, the crew build did a very good job of just making sure that they could anticipate where Prismatic were coming in from. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, um, I guess, you know, we, we do have quite a few, um, so we're moving on from Kelp Dome onto Camp Triggerfish, so in a way, quite a few of our maps this week have, have, have fairly restricted movement options, you know, we've got, obviously we've got more H Towers coming up uh, later in the set, um, we might see Schellendorf, um, you know, the only really sort of extremely open, pretty much go wherever you like ones we've got, uh, Muscle Forge and Black Belly. I'm pretty sure on this map and mode combination, there was a really big upset in the Serpent Turf and then, um, Venomous Switch, um, match where, um, I'm pretty sure, um, all of the Venomous Squid's team members jumped over to the box with the claim, to the box, um, to the, um, Serpent Turf and, um, Basket in overtime and apparently it, they threw it in, but apparently the overtime ended just in time. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Because I'm, I'm like, I imagine that you know the, the time limit actually goes from when the ball scores points, not from when it hits the basket. Like it apparently it looked like it went in, but I don't know what. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna have to check that. Yeah, you because know, that's. I mean, it's always cool to see a photo finish or like a denial of one. You know, clams. Obviously, you've got that real unknown in overtime because the the methods for stopping it aren't just, you know, you don't just draw a line under things the way that you can in the other ranked modes. You know, it's not yeah. a simple matter of just splat the Rainmaker, put your feet on the tower, that sort of thing. 
I guess, you know, see if we get a match like that now. And in fact, yes, once again, clock just used to its full extent. Um, Hess giving characteristic advice there. And it certainly seems like our teams tonight are taking that to heart. Here we go. Krillville keeping a pretty similar weapon loadout, while Prismatic changing things up quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, the only, I think the only new weapon on Krillville's lineup is Turbo taking that Sasha Gecko of you know, an excellent, excellent plan. Yeah. Meanwhile, on Prismatic's side, it looks like we've just got a lot of a lot of realign action happening right now. Um, both teams doing a pretty good job of picking up their clams, but combat going a little bit more favorably for Krill right now. Yeah, he gets taken down by um, Chich, I believe, after taking down Lukash. Um, and Krillville doing a very good job of not getting too aggressive here. They've got the nice, nice control of Nip. They've got their power clams, but they're not going to go into the store yet, because they know Prismatic can still stop them at this point. That eight jets run out though, and I think we might see a push. Gonna... Through the middle, no, 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 well played by that super jumper though, I couldn't quite tell who they were, but they managed to grab that power claim and get out safely with it. And in fact, Night Terror ended up getting punished in pursuit. Two down on Prismatine. Chich seems to be trying to get a they're trying to Krillville seems to be trying to get a push in here. Yeah, I reckon they're probably gonna be able to make some make some progress there. Um that said, their, their push seems to have stalled a little bit. That Tentabrella doing excellent work of just denying any advance. Once again, yeah, we got two power clams in an inkjet. Um, I guess we'll see where they go. Yeah. Oh, that's spectacular play there. Oh. Now with the super I don't think it's going to work out. Well, I mean, it, it has to be said, you know, it's very impressive to see Krillbill just getting away with such consistent pressure against um, against this defensive area. You know, they've been going down to in. There we go, and once again, then, that seems to be Krillbill's just, you know, their, their preferred play. To use that super jump so that the power clam never has to worry about a telegraph at all. I've been starting to see that I'm pretty sure Naira 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 uh, has been has a like has been having a power climb but hasn't really been pushing me. Mm. Well of course it's very tricky to do it by yourself. Um, you know, it, um, everyone can see where you are. It's like having the Rainmaker except you've obviously not got that unlimited ink, you don't have that giant explosion. So Krillbo with another push right here, let's see if we could stop it on his own. But oh. They do get stalled, but we've got the we've got um yeah the Tenderbrella jumping back to spawn there. Yeah, I, Lukash I gets a little bit too eager and does there. get stopped. But oh, the wow. bomb got oh. that's a clean down if Krillville realise, and they do. They go in for it. That's the break. Um, you see, but they, yeah, they get way too aggressive there. I don't think they're going to be scoring any further in this set. Yeah, that was wipe, I don't think they were... I think they were playing way too aggressive. Yeah, that defense from Kexplar was absolutely beautiful. Just, just picking up players left, right and center, realizing that they were just getting a bit too... a bit too carried away. On. And punishing nicely. Naira gets, gets singled out and gets taken down. Mm, and yeah, so I do like the fact that the borders, that like the game, has opened up a little bit. So Krill built for the, you know, they had almost two and a half minutes of just solidly sitting oh, it's, there it's, in Prismatic it's one, Street. It's one up on um, Krill Bill. Yeah. Um, so I think we, we, you know, if there's a counter push, it's going to happen now. 
Um, but Chich doing a very good job of just diverting attention there. Um, threatening to just break the basket open with that power clam and then getting taken out. Yeah. We're just going into the 1v2 here and start, decides to retreat. Mm. Yeah, realizing that the street perhaps. Be Meanwhile, I'm just hanging out with the back, at the back of that super clan. And we do see that clan relay happening there. Um, I think uh, possibly Chich um, throwing to Natty one clan at a time. Uh, maybe Lukash. We get the super jump, and it looks like no, no. This time they're ready for them. They don't get that break. So overtime will be awarded unless Crewbill can get a super clan in very quickly. Oh, it's all the fall down. Yeah, the clean white. stops them. So here we go. It's you know, I've seen I've seen tougher overtakes before. We'll see whether or not Prismatic are able to make it happen. Um, we do have perhaps a tactical oh, error as down. the Inkjet carries the power plant, so they're not going to be able to advance. They do get splats though. The big question is you know, time's not oh. on their side. Oh, unfortunately they just yeah. Um, I suppose they were staring down a pretty big uh, big points gap regardless. Yeah. Still, that's you know. Well played there to Krill Bill, who did an excellent job of just staying on the offensive for so long. They didn't really have a chink in their arm or opening up until about, you know, three and a half, four minutes had passed. And up until then, they were just relentlessly pressing the attack. Yeah. I don't know, certainly if they can, you know, they can manage that kind of performance, um... Once again, in this, you know, like in in turf war, that's just going to be an easy win for them if they're able to just bottle bottle the other team up. Um, of course, they won't have that objective pressure to to force them to, to play into them. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Turf war, muscle forge again. This is a very, a very different mode, very different play styles. Hopefully, mm. well, there's certainly there's way more room for players to just you know choose to go their own way if they if they really want to you know you're not as um as constrained by vertical barriers there is, there is um three pathways that you can go down you can go down the right left and center so it's going to be hard to keep track of which player is going to go to go down which mm. and of course you know <laughs> unlike in unlike in um unlike in, well, m unlike in clams but more like clams than any other rank mode i suppose you know the entire map is your objective you you do have to just pay a lot of attention to everything around you yeah. You know, you can't, can't afford to just assume that everything's working fine just because you're getting the splats on the front line. Because if people have slipped past you, then they're just gonna, you know, just gonna get a bunch of cheap points on the, on the, on the turf. So we'll see how it goes. Um, this is obviously, um, on the back of Clams, which usually doesn't knock out. You know, we've, we've now had teams, you know, perhaps have a bit more time to sort of get a read on each other after the lightning fast knockout on Kelto. You know, maybe we'll see some weapon adjustments happening. If not in this map, then, um, you know, perhaps in Moray. Wait, so, coming back to scores, I do I do believe that it's 2-0 to, um, Quill Bill? Yes, it is. Oh, there we go. We've, uh... There's a blow or a ball point coming out from uh, one ball point on crew, but one ball, <laughs> one ball, ball point on Prismatic, one blob lobber on Trillville. Yeah, and we've seen that double inkjet run by Prismatic as well. That that um, L3 nozzle nose D and the ball point splatling both just really good at pulling it out and exerting that pressure. Interesting to see. Yeah, um, I believe Natty tries to push on the ball point, but doesn't seem to work. Mm. Krill Bill maintaining a lot of offensive pressure here, just using that blob lover and the bombs to just scare people when they're in otherwise pretty safe turf. But there we go, right through. Oh no! Doesn't quite surprise Turbo. Well, Does the only one left. Yeah, gets the ambush, but goes down in a trade. Um, Krill Bill very happy here with the amount of turf that they're controlling, I think. Yeah. Now Natty's, um, yeah, basically able to push up a high. Um, Roy's just been watering at the back for, um, a minute now, let's see if he can shine. Yeah, well, I think Roy is very, very clearly waiting for the right moment to unleash that ink jet. You know, they want to be able to use it as part of a push. Um, and here we go, and out it comes. Now. You know, Roy needs to get some kicks, needs to create some pressure. Um, 
manages to stop that blast, but Nanny punishes. But I think that's still, you know, an improvement in Prismatic's position here. They are able to regain a bit of breathing room. Um, Night Terror now just runs away from that inkjet, but unfortunately that Blob Blobber is really, really mean to people who are caught in the alley. Yeah. Yeah, you know, at this point, we seem to have a bit of a stalemate developing. Crew build for, you know, probably figuring that they're not going to benefit by pushing too far forward and would rather just, you know, control the mid, wait for Prismatic to make the first move and then punish them if they don't, you know, watch them whilst they're coming in. It certainly seems to be working pretty well for us. Everyone seems to be building to try to build special and try to push at the same time, but, uh, it's kind of stuck down at the bottom now. Mm. But this is potentially a weakness here for Crew Bill. They did go two players down um, in only exchange for one. But Turbo just doing so much work with that Blob Blob, which brings it back handily. That mid still completely burning. Raichu picks up Natty. And that Ink Jet now, meanwhile, chases Chich all around the sponge. I think the sponge actually ended up saving Chich there to block that line of sight. Um, and now, um, despite that push into the middle, it's still looking very shaky for Prismatic. I do feel that Krill Bill have the edge here. Yeah, it's one up on um, it's on one up on um, side. Yeah, moving around here. Um, yeah, they, with they, 10 they... seconds left, I don't think Prismatic can make. No, not when they're able to maintain such forward positions. You can see that's the squid's cue, the danger sign blinking, and. I don't think there's really much much question about who wins this one. Yeah. And indeed, yeah, an absolute shutdown there. Um, interesting if you actually look at the total amounts painted. Teams are pretty even. Krillbill's only got a very small edge in terms of how much each individual was able to put down inkwise. But you could see the total control at the end was just completely one-sided. Yeah. I do believe there's a sub happening. Ah, uh, yes. Um, well, I suppose we'll just let I believe, through. I think it's Chich is subbing out for someone. Mm, well, I suppose we'll see who our new face is. Um, Given it's, you know, given it's Moray Towers and Tower Control, there are quite a few reasons you might want to bring a specialist in. You know, possibly you I'm want longer think, I'm, range. I'm waiting for it to be an Ely domain now. <laughs> I, I'd love to see an Ely though. I don't think it's going to happen, but it would be pretty damn cool. But, you know, may well be something long range, you know, maybe something with a Stingray, a Splat Charger or a Heavy Splatling. Um, on the other I hand, believe... you know, maybe they maybe they want a, a Blaster or another Slosher control the space around the tower a bit. Better. I think Natty's going to be running the blaster, because most of the time I've seen Natty play on tower control, he's been running the blaster, so... Hmm. Well, um, looks like LO247 is jumping in. Um, let's see what happens there. <laughs> we are in, yep, getting the usual requests for game 9, well... We can't make that happen, only the players can make that happen. If this, if this, if Krill Bill win this, then we're gonna have to hope for a reverse sweep if we want game nine. Mm, yeah, they'll be looking at match point if they manage to get the win here. Um, and so far, they've managed. You know, their play has been very confident. Um, they've been not afraid at all to get up close and personal and you know, go into those those really really tense skirmish situations. Partly because they've managed to come out on top of them. You know. Probably a little bit more. I feel more like Christmas team's getting a little bit too cautious with their play. I feel like they need to be a bit more aggressive. Mm. Well, of course, Moray Towers Rainmaker is another map with potential for a very quick knockout. Like, if you're not able to keep control of the tower, once it gets past, like, sort of the, the climb for the, like, you know, where the splat zone was in the first game, it's very, very difficult to arrest its progress past that point because it just doesn't line up with the, you know, with the path out of spawn. Stingrays don't really work as well against it because you've got to adjust your verticality and you're very exposed when, you, when you're going for it. So I, I do feel that it's a map that's going to reward, you know, that aggression that Krillville have managed so far. Mm, I wonder if we're going to see Double Blaster. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure that we've seen uh, Rapid Blaster Pro every single game from Lukash so far. So if <laughs> someone on Crew Bill runs a shorter ranged blaster, maybe a custom blaster, maybe a Clash or a Clash Neo, that would 
you know, I think that would work together quite well. Yeah. Indeed, no, Ellen, um, we've got a complete change up um, there. We do just see the range blaster, um, custom range blaster, in fact. From we do see the pro coming up from Lukash now. <laughs> this is terrible, I can't even recognize my brass. Yeah, um, and we've got that rapid blaster pro deco there on Night Terror. I'll be interested to see how that one plays out. Very, very aggressive push there from Natty. It does get, does get punished in the end. Oh, most of the other players can tend to be fairly, fairly defensive. I'm oh, in fact, no, Turbo has gone up, and is now skirmishing on the snipe. I don't believe they really have a long-range weapon apart from the Pro. Mm, I don't. Mm. The Pro is more mid-range. But that's a big play that Krillbill have managed there. They've bought themselves a bunch of, of cheap time where they can move the tower, and they're not going to have any serious opposition from um, from the Prismatic players because they just are too spaced out. Um, and indeed, we're seeing the tower just burning through that checkpoint, and people just go further forward. Turbo's just making that tower go zoom. Turbo is just happy to pretty much just sit there and not really do His anything. His name is called because Turbo because for a reason. Like Turbo's teammates are just doing more than enough work. Night Terror now gets into a double, pose, but isn't able to dislodge Turbo, and that inkjet just causes so much, so much grief there. Turbo doing that final ascent, and I think we're looking at a knockout. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I suppose we, we did we did call this to some extent, that relentless aggression from Krilbu. Um Now we see the reverse sweep. Oh, well, you know, you can never rule it out until you actually see the points <laughs> on the board. Um, but yeah, we just see, see that, you know, that, that willingness to just sure push forward. I'm pretty sure mistakes right, some mistake right there was just going in one by one. They weren't really grouping up, I believe. Mm. And it's, you know, it's very difficult like that when you get locked into it coming out of spawn. You know, especially when you've got a ticking objective, you're, you know, often, you know, your inclination is to just go and do something about it. Go and, you know, see if you can, you know, dislodge people from that town. Now but... it's a Rainmaker humpback pump track. <laughs> well, it's another one, you know, it's one that you either, you know, you, you can see, you can, you can see almost any kind of play here. You know, you can get a lot of potential for quick points, but... If the, if the defensive team's on their toes, then they can just drag it out and it can, you know... It, it's, not a, it's not a map where you'd be surprised to hear about a stalemate. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, obviously this is absolutely last time that, you know... At this point, Krillbill, you know, they're sitting on match point for the rest of this set. All they need to do is win one. Um, so far, they've been pretty good about, you know, not, not getting overconfident. They've, you know, they've, they've not really been punished too many times for overextending. There were a couple of moments in Triggerfish Clams where I felt that they'd committed a bit too much, but otherwise they've been very good at, you know, tempering their aggression with an awareness of the spaces around them and, you know, an ability to just deal with anyone who tries to stop them. Yes. No, we'll see, we'll see how they, how they choose to roll here. Um, yeah, you know, obviously they've, they've made pretty good use out of their ink jets to date. I'll be expecting to see at least one come back for here. Um. Prismating, prismating, choosing carefully with their weapon choice. Mm. Well, you know, obviously, you if you're staring down four losses in a row, if you need to win five in a row in order to take the set, then you very much need to, you know, think hard about what you're using. We've got Splat Dooley's coming out, we've got mm. even a Charger coming out from um, Prisma Tank. Well, uh, you know, and that Clash Neo as well, another pick I don't think we've seen so far in this set. I feel that, you know, this is a good, a good, like a good attitude to realise that perhaps you need to shake things up if you want to do And it. three down. Wow, yeah, just that ruthless um, approach there from Turbo does but get then stopped Splash though. Splash just dealing with it, everyone himself. Yeah, oh, the, the Umbrella Shield not quite in the right place. Natty going for a very, very early push here. Manages the trade with Night Terror. We'll see whether or not Krillbill feel inclined to, to try and turn that into a double move. Tensor Missiles should help Prisma Team, Prisma Team Yeah, they're being relentless with the use of their subs and that blob lobbers bubbles to just, you know, 
force people to, out of their comfort zone. Let's down on Prism Team, I believe. Um, Roy with the Stingray ready, but choosing not to... There we go, out it comes now that the Rainmaker's being picked up, and the Rainmaker does... Oh, no, Stingray. survives! Natty just charges through with those curling bombs and bubbles. And... Oh, oh Turbo just can't be stopped. Oh, okay. Wow. Krillville, after that, yeah, they, 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 what, they stalled there, they got their specials ready, they saw an opportunity, and they just made it happen. That is Rainmaker in a nutshell. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, really a tremendous effort on their part, like, Pris Prismatic, despite the fact that they didn't always get the best of the exchanges there, they certainly didn't make it easy for them. They were able to stall the Rainmaker on that initial attempt, they were able to keep it bottled up there, but that, that ability to just slip slip straight through the defenses, deploy those specials and just go, okay, we've just completely owned all of this turf here. We've painted all of it, all of it at once. That's really quite spectacular. What do you do when that happens, really? I mean, I don't think there's that much you can do. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, congratulations to Krillbill on an absolutely, you know, thumping victory here. 5-0 and... Really, probably only one of the matches, anything but a completely one-sided, decisive win. Um, yeah, you know, they've, they've certainly, if they're able to bring this kind of this kind of attitude and make it work for the rest of their matches in the season, I think that they're very much looking like the favourites. Um, yeah. In the meanwhile, yeah, so, so obviously an unfortunate outcome for Prismatic, but they did have guts all the way through there. I hope that they won't be too discouraged by it. Um, there are many more matches to be played after all. Well, I suppose that, you know, turned out a bit quicker than we expected it to. <laughs> um, so yeah, unfortunately there's no more no more Splatoon that we can offer anyone this evening. That's the only match we had scheduled. There will be an absolute bonanza of matches tomorrow night. We are gonna be streaming probably only one of them, given how closely they are scheduled to each other. But we're gonna do our absolute best to get as many recorded as possible. Um, hopefully we can get them all um, all played back um, before too long. Maybe maybe early next week. Possibly on the weekend if there's a bit of time then. Um, in the meantime, though, I think we should probably sign out. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Tiger, for being, um, being a great commentary partner. It's been good to have you on. It was a pleasure. And, yeah, you know, good night to everyone out there. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed Splatoon for the evening. <laughs> yep.